So how to grow muscle has been explained in depth on this channel before. And to do that, you can use multiple tools to challenge your muscle, to overload the muscle and to perform repeated stress, for example, by using dynamic contractions. So think of machines as another tool that you may use in your arsenal and how you use them, what exercises you use them for, how you put them into your programming depends on you and your needs. I can't tell you that through a YouTube video, but what I can do is lay out many issues for you to consider that can help you make those decisions. And again, my goal with this video by intent is to make it as simple and as digestible as possible. And so we need to start by thinking about machines as a spectrum on a continuum. Not all machines are created equal. For example, very simply, a chest press machine in one gym may feel different to a chest press machine in a different gym because they are different brands of that machine. They may have a slight difference in the angle at which you can push or the amount of load that you can use. But more generally, we have different types of machines, different categorizations, if you like. First are plate loaded machines where you can load plates. That was an intense description and talking of intensity, that's one of the benefits of plate loaded machines you can go heavy, you can load a fair amount of plates onto it. And in addition, you can use small increments in weight by using the small incremental weights depending on your needs. And so when we think of plate loaded machines, they give you a great deal of flexibility when you think about the load that you're using for your repetitions and your sets, etc. In contrast to another type of machine, the machines with a stack load and you use the pin to choose the resistance that you are going to use. Benefits of this type of machine are they are quick and easy to use, very efficient to use. Now, for example, if you're doing drop set, it'd be very quick to go from your last working set to that drop set and you can perform that with a minimal rest interval. So there's one application instantly that you can think about for which type of machine you use. This one is very good for drop sets, for example, and can be quicker to do that, for example, than a plate loaded machine where Derek has taken all the 45s. But then again, the disadvantages is with a preset stack for advanced lifters, for example, the stack may literally not be heavy enough for them. They have to very much stick to what that machine and that brand has chosen. And the list of potential applications is essentially endless, but those are just a few. And these are the ideas that I want you to think about the way to analyze the benefits and disadvantages when you think about different machines that you have in your gym. And so very quickly, I'm going to talk about cable machines. Now, cable machines, really, they're in a classification of their own, not really with other machines, but technically they are a machine and they use resistance and stacks and they are very good, versatile tools that you can use to work muscles from many angles, to work your body in many planes of motion, the transverse, sagittal, frontal plane. I really like cables, but very sadly, many people do stupid stuff on them and post them to Instagram. But with a cable machine, you have a cable that runs over a pulley and into a weight stack. And so that is the technical difference really with other machines, the way in which force is produced to overcome that resistance. And we can think of the concept of constant tension with a cable machine over the range of motion during a repetition. And this relates to the idea of a strength curve, a strength curve being where does an exercise feel the hardest and feel the easiest during the lift? And I have in-depth videos on strength curve where I cite research, where I talk about different exercises and examples but with a cable machine, that will give you a slightly different strength curve to other exercise tools, for example. And when we think about, for example, something like a barbell, that is why people add chains to barbells because it creates linear mass displacement, which essentially means that that lift will feel harder with the chain at a point where it didn't without the chain. And so cables are just something else I wanted to throw out there before I get to the benefits and disadvantages of machines. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but here are some key factors. The first benefit of using machines, they're easy easy to use for many people. They may be specifically suitable for elderly people, for beginner lifters looking to develop an understanding of movement and muscles and just getting used to the idea of activating motor units and resistance training and to build confidence with weightlifting without a spotter. But of course, the other side of that, of course, beginners should learn the major compound movements and become competent with them if they have no medical issues preventing that. And some people, it may be at any part of the spectrum, may just feel more comfortable with a certain machine for a certain exercise and that's fine as well. There is no real right or wrong here. This binary tribal thinking we see in fitness just doesn't translate to a wider population of people who train. Number two, and very importantly, Machines can be very useful for isolating a specific muscle and isolating a certain angle at training that muscle. And so just to say that many people will, will use free weights and machines within one session, but for a pushing session, for example, they may use a barbell bench press and later in the session, they may want to just isolate that muscle, a specific part, and a machine can be very good for doing this because it's literally set up for you to sit down or lie down on it and it will hit that target muscle, it can target that prime mover 
activation. So it essentially takes the risk of cheating a rep out of the equation because you're in that fixed position and you are putting the work on that prime mover. The agonist muscles within an exercise are the main mover muscles, the lead actor, if you will. Antagonist muscle works against the agonist muscle, the supporting actor. And then you have the synergistic muscle. And you can think of these muscles as the glue of the exercise. Now, of course, it's important here to say that I'm not telling you that machines are better than free weights. That's not at all what this video is saying. I'm just giving you benefits and disadvantages. So of course, as part of a holistic training program, using free weights and building that self-stabilization of your core as you're performing compound movements, of course is very important in a fitness program. Being able to perform distal movements while having strong core stabilization, the core being your abs, your back, many other muscle groups, of course that's important. So I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying that one benefit of machines for some people in certain scenarios is it can help to stabilize your core for you and allow you to really focus on that prime mover activation. Safety, very clear, but very important for everything. Safety for me is very much at the forefront of my list for most fitness concepts. And there are many applications of this, but let's say, for example, you've been performing a pushing session and you've been using barbells and dumbbells and your muscles and your body are fatigued, but you want some extra work. Perhaps using a machine where it gives you this support is a safe way of further smashing that muscle. That's just one example. Five, they can be good for people who are rehabilitating. And so to the disadvantages of machines, number one, that dude that sweats a river all over it and you only find out after you've sat down, just ruined my new Gymshark pants. Another disadvantage, unnatural bar paths. When you're thinking of something such as a Smith machine, a bench press on a Smith machine, of course, your bar path is dictated by a fixed position on that machine. Whereas if you're using a barbell, you have a more natural bar path. So most certainly movement patterns and bar paths, for example, are more restrictive on machines. And that can be a disadvantage because of course, as part of a holistic training program, you want to be training natural movements. You want to be training a multitude of movements, different angles, and free weights give you a great deal of flexibility for that. However, some machines, for example, do have different settings where you can change the angle of the push or the pull or whatever it may be. So again, there's lots of minutia there. Accessibility. In some gyms, you may only have one of a machine or only a few of a certain machine. And if the gym's busy, you literally may not be able to use it. Whereas if you have free weights, for example, it's pretty flexible that you can find something, find an area and, and perform your exercise. And also we can think of more specific applications such as a biomechanical superset. Let's say you're using free weights and a machine. It can be unrealistic to reserve a machine as you're going between that superset probably not reasonable, especially if the gym is busy, if the gym is completely empty, perhaps more feasible. So when you're thinking about something such as a biomechanical superset, you may want to use, for example, free weights and calisthenics together because it's more accessible, more doable, perhaps more reasonable in a public gym. We've already discussed the idea that isolating a muscle can be an advantage of a machine. But as I alluded to before, not having core involvement could also be a disadvantage for other people. And so this is where the nuance of fitness comes in. This is where the variability comes in, how it very much depends on you and your needs. And so there's so much analysis that can go on here. So please give me any other advantages or disadvantages of using machines that you can think of, as, as mine was not an exhaustive list, but I do believe that that's a wide array of ideas for you to consider. And that is the correct way of communicating it, giving that variable idea of, well, this is an advantage, but here's a disadvantage. That is how information should be communicated to, to a wider audience. I'm James Linker. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.